Hi everyone, it's Leah, your lead course instructor here at Advanced eClinical Training. So welcome back to our pharmacology lessons. Um, today we're going to just briefly discuss some psychiatric medications. Now, I don't want you all to spend a lot of time memorizing all of these medications, what they are used to treat, their mechanisms of actions. That's not what this is about. But as a um, certified medical assistant, part of your job will be to um, take down people's medical history and take down a list of medications. And so um, a lot of people are on uh, psychiatric medications uh, these days, especially antidepressants. So I really just wanted to give you an overview of some of these medications um, so you can start to familiarize yourself um, with what they are and some of their names. And also just keep in mind that um, you, as you gain more experience in the field and you start hearing these names more often, um, you'll start to memorize them more and know what they're used for. Okay, so let's move along here to, so classes of psychiatric medications. Um, so the main um, classes of psychiatric medications include anti-anxiety medications or agents, of course, antidepressants, antipsychotics, mood stabilizers, and then psychostimulants or otherwise known just as stimulants. Uh, so antidepressants. So there are five main categories of antidepressants. So um, they include the uh, monamine oxidase inhibitor inhibitors, or otherwise known as MAOIs. We have the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, or SSRIs. We also have the serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors inhibitors also known as SNRIs. And then we also have the tricyclic anti antidepressants as well as a new group of antidepressants. Um, they're kind of thrown into this group called atypical antidepressants. So we'll first begin uh, talking about the MAOIs. So MAOIs, um, is used to, to treat major depression or um, depression itself. Um, and it's an older, older class of medications. It's not used as often these days any anymore, um, but um, it works. There's an enzyme called a monamine oxidase, and it's involved in removing the neurotransmitters, uh, norepinephrine, serotonin, and dopamine from the brain. So the MAOIs prevent this from happening because, of course, the more serotonin you have in your brain, the happier you're going to be. Um, so the, there are four uh, main MO, MAOIs that are available here. And the United States uh, listed, you know, first with their generic name and then the trade name. So um, those are here for you to see right here. And again, I don't want you to memorize all of these names. Just know that there's a class of medications for antidepressants called MAOIs. And again, these are an older class of medication. You're not nearly going to see these as often any longer. So some side effects of MAOIs include dry mouth, nausea, headache, drowsiness, insomnia, dizziness, or lightheadedness, and a, you know skin reaction. Now moving along to the SSRIs or the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. So again, these medications are used to treat major depression. The um, antidepressant effect of the SSRIs is mediated by the inhibition of the reuptake of serotonin in the synapses of the um, nerve. So effectively, it helps to increase the serotonin levels in the brain. And again, the more serotonin you have in the brain, the happier your brain is going to be. Um, some of these names, you might be familiar with some of them because, again, these are more common than um, more commonly prescribed now than the MAOIs. But we have 
Cetalopram or Celexa, Acetalopram or Lexapro, Fluoxetine or Prozac, Fluvoxamine or Luvox, Peroxetine or Paxil, and then Sertraline or Zoloft. So some side effects of the SSRIs um, include anxiety, drowsiness, headache, insomnia, some sexual dysfunction, weight gain, um, and then other less common adverse, adverse effects that can occur is the QT uh, prolongation in our heart rhythm, or uh, otherwise known as a long QT interval, and increased risk for suicidal behavioral behavior and suicidal ideation. And that's mostly in, um, could happen more commonly in um, uh, patients that are under the 18, under the age of 18 years old. Um, so that's something to, to watch out for. Sometimes when people begin to take some antidepressants, they can experience an increase in their suicidal ideation if they had it prior and then serotonin syndrome as well. Next, we're gonna talk about the serotonin noroepinephrine reuptake inhibitors. Um, so again, these medications are used to treat um, major depressive disorder or otherwise known as MDD. Um, and so the antidepressant effects of the SNRIs are medi mediated by the inhibition of the reuptake of serotonin and noroepinephrine. And again, um, the more serotonin and the more norepinephrine norepinephrine your brain has, the happier it's going to be. So the five main SNRIs available here in the U.S. and that we use, and again, you might be familiar with a few of these, um, the desphenylexine, which is Pristique, Duloxetine or Cymbalta. Um, we have Fetzema, which I don't, I haven't really seen at all, if ever, in any of my patients. Um, Savella, and then the venalaxaphine or Effexor. And again, side effects with these SNRIs include anxiety, constipation, headache, insomnia, nausea, sexual dysfunction, um, and increased blood pressure and heart rate. And that's um, because of the norepinephrine um, that's in these SNRIs. Noroepinephrine will increase your blood pressure alone. It's used as a drug alone in medicine um, and your heart rate. Next, we have the tricyclic antidepressants. Um, again, uh, tricyclic antidepressants are an order class of drug like the MAOIs, and we don't use these as often. You won't see these as commonly as the SSRIs or the SNRIs. So again, this medication is used to treat major depressive disorder. Um, and so the effects of the TSAs are created by the inhibition of serotonin and noroepinephrine um, reuptake. So here are some of the names. Um, for tricyclic antidepressants. Um, I do see amitriptyline used commonly still. Um, a lot of times patients are using or prescribed amitriptyline at bedtime. Um, that's a more common one. Uh, amoxapine, um, anaphrano, um, this doxepin I still see used pretty often. And then these last few here, um, again, I don't see these ones as often for the, the uh, TSAs. Mostly it's the amitriptyline and the doxepin. Um, but that doesn't mean that you won't see these, these other names as well. And again, some side effects of the TS, the TCAs, I apologize, TCAs or tricyclic antidepressants include blurred vision, confusion, constipation, delirium, dry mouth, difficulty urinating or urinary retention, also orthostatic hypotension and waking. Now moving on to the last category of the antidepressants is the atypical antidepressants. And again, 
Um, as I said in the beginning, so these atypical antidepressants are kind of new medications um, that are labeled to treat major depressive disorder and have mechanisms of action that make them a little bit different from um, the last four classes of antidepressants that we talked about. But, um, and, and again, these are, we're starting to see these a lot more often now. So uh, bupropion or Wellbutrin is used pretty often. Um, sometimes this is prescribed for people that are trying to uh, quit smoking. Uh, mirtazapine or Remeron, I see a lot of um, elderly patients being prescribed this medication. Uh, nephazone, trazodone is one that's used. I see a lot in patients um, prescribed for them, again, at bedtime. Um, Vibrid, and then Trentelix is a new one as well. These two, Vibrid and Trentelix, are the, the most new that I am aware of. Um, I see Trentelix and Vibrid also being used uh, to treat people that have bipolar disorder as well as the um, major depressive disorder as well. So um, moving on here to, um, let me move my face so, <laughs> so you can see these names. Okay, so some of these, so moving on to the next class of psychiatric medications known as um, anti-anxiety medications or anti-anxiety agents. Most of these medications um, are benzodiazepines and buspirone, and it's used to help reduce anxiety. So um, these benzodiazepines are used to uh, treat and reduce anxiety, as I said, and also are used to treat um, GAD, or otherwise known as General Anxiety Disorder. So, so some of these medications um, that the names of these medications, uh, you might be familiar with some of them. Xanax, um, I see people, that's a pretty common one. Librium, not so much. Klonopin or clonazepam, pretty common. Diazepam or Valium. Um, they give this medication pretty often to people who are withdrawing from alcohol. Uh, let's see, lorazepam or Ativan is a pretty common one as well. Uh, let's see, Restoro, I do see this one as well, pretty common. People are given Restoro at bedtime to help them sleep. Um, so those are the most common ones on this list that I, I tend to see in my daily practice with patients. And again, um, we have to, of course, talk about some of the, you know, adverse effects. So you have to be careful with benzodiazepines because they can be habit forming um, and they have um, some adverse effects, especially with, you know, the central nervous system depression. And so this can make these medications pretty dangerous, especially for um, elderly adults. Um, and so you also want to be conscientious if you have a patient that's prescribed one of these anti-anxiety medications and then say they're also prescribed a, um, you know, a narcotic pain medication like oxycodone. So some good teaching, um, you know, if you see that and you will see it sometimes, you know, people take anti-anxiety medications and then say they break their arm and so now they are on oxycodone for the pain. So some good teaching is you just want to make sure you let that patient know that you do not, you don't want to take the, the uh, benzodiazepine at the same time as you're taking the oxycodone because of course it can suppress your central nervous system and depress, you know, your respiratory system and the breathing as well. So just keep that in mind. And of course, when we're talking about the depression of the um, central nervous system, you know, that can, can cause some cognitive impairment, drowsiness, delirium, falls, um, addiction. And then of course, uh, there's always rebound anxiety after short-term short use of these benzodiazepines. Moving along to antipsychotics. So antipsychotic medications are used to treat psychosis. Now, psychosis can be related or can happen due to several different things. It could be related to, you know, someone abusing drugs or to 
drug use or to a mental health condition such as, such as a schizophrenia, a bipolar disorder, or a severe, severe depression, um, which can also be known as psychotic depression. So um, some healthcare providers um, may also, with, these, with this population of um, patients, um, you might see them on a combination of different medications. So uh, if your patient has bipolar disorder, um, you know, you might see them on like a antipsychotic and an antidepressant. So that group of uh, patients is sometimes, you know, prescribed um, a combination of some of these psychiatric medications. Um, but these antipsychotics are divided into typical antipsychotics and the atypical antipsychotics, also known as the first and second generation of these medications. So here is a list, um, some typical antipsychotics. Here you can read these. Um, now, I have to say Haldol is probably the one you're going to see used the most. That's used often, um, you know, working in the emergency department if somebody comes in and they are combative or very confused and um, psychotic, we do give them Haldol. Haldol is also given in the inpatient um, healthcare setting as well. Um, for people that are, you know, hallucinating or in some psychosis state. So that is a common one you'll see um, as well. Now, some of these atypical antipsychotics, you might um, start to recognize some of these names. Um, Abilify is, uh, is one I'm seeing here pretty used. I, I see commercials for it. It's being used more often. Um, this, Vralar is another one um, being used um, pretty often now. I see people with bipolar being prescribed Vralar um, in addition to other medications. Latuda, Zyprexa is a pretty common one. Seroquel is a pretty common one now, especially uh, for the adult population. Um, you'll see a lot of times um, elderly people on this at bedtime. Um, uh, Reciprodal, common. Geodin, not so common. Geodin is, um, I see that mostly prescribed to people uh, with rapidly cycling bipolar disorder, um, which is some of the main ones. And again, I don't want you all to memorize all of these names, but just, you know, some, I wanted to, I want you to just start to familiarize yourselves because again, um, as a, you know, a medical assistant, you will be taking medical histories. So you're going to come into, you know, you're going to have patients that have major medical, you know, depressive disorder or bipolar disorder or schizophrenia. And these medications may be on their list. So some side effects of the antipsychotics, of course, is sedation, um, anticholinergic effects, sexual dysfunction, weight gain, and orthostatic hypotension. Moving on to mood stabilizers. So mood stabilizers are used to treat bipolar disorder and mood changes associated with other mental health conditions. Um, in some cases, um, providers may prescribe mood stabilizers to increase the effect of other um, psychiatric medications and used to treat depression. So a big one is lithium um, for these mood stabilizers. Also some anticonvulsants are used. So um, interestingly enough, um, Tegretol is one medication that you'll see, and that's really a, a classified as an anticonvulsant, but you'll see that used as a mood stabilizer as well. Um, the lithium, of course, um, or Lamictal is another one uh, that's an anticonvulsant that is used as a mood stabilizer. So, um, but these are all treat, used for treating mood disorders in, in bipolar patients, mostly but also can be used, and I've seen it being used to treat people that have um, personality disorders as well. So mood stabilizer, so lithium. So here are some um, adverse effects of lithium, is nausea, um, polyuria, so having to urinate often, 
a polydipsia and that's feeling very thirsty, having tremors, weight gain. And then our last um, category for psychiatric medications are these uh, CNS stimulants. So central nervous stimulants, you know, are the primary treatment for attention deficit disorder or ADHD and hyperactivity disorder in children and adults. Um, not so these medications uh, are used to treat ADHD in adults as well. I just want to make that clear. Um, so again, here are some of the medications probably most um, familiar to you is Adderall and probably Ritalin. Vyvanse is a newer one, um, and I see this mostly given to adults with ADHD. Um, Ritalin I see mostly in children, given to children with ADHD. So, um, And then, of course, we have the side effects or adverse effects of CNS stimulants. You have dizziness, dry mouth, insomnia, irritability, weight loss, and then some less common but more serious adverse effects of these stimulants can include elevations in blood pressure and heart rate, of course, um, cardiovascular events, psychosis, preoprism, tics, um, and abuse or diversion. Uh, so thank you again for uh, joining me here um, for this pharmacology series on psychiatric medications. Again, I just want to make it clear, I don't want you all to spend a lot of time memorizing all of these, but just familiarize yourself with what kind of medications are used to treat the different um, you know, mental health conditions here and just familiarize yourself with some of these names, okay? And if you have any questions or need any clarification, of course, you know you can always email me um, or schedule office hours with me as well. All right, I'll see you all again soon. Thanks so much.